my name is Lisa Corbett and I am the safeguarding lead here at St Anne's Hospice. In this short presentation I will explain what defensible documentation means and why it is relevant to you. Defensible documentation is not really very complex, in fact it can be explained very easily using the five W's. So who needs to know about defensible documentation? What is defensible documentation? Why do we need defensible documentation? Where do we record defensively? And when do we record defensively? So who needs to know about defensible documentation? The simple answer is everyone, but especially those people who are responsible for recording or documenting in patients or clients' notes. So what is defensible documentation? It is not about fences or self-defense in the sense of martial arts, but it is about being able to defend your actions or lack of them. The dictionary defines defensibility as being justifiable by argument, able to be supported by argument, especially when criticized or under scrutiny. So why do we document defensively? Why do we have good documentation? Basically, it provides proof that you have said or done something. Remember the old adage, if you didn't document it, you haven't done it. Law courts adopt the attitude that if something is not recorded, it did not happen. And therefore you have a professional and legal duty to keep good records. If a complaint is made, good clear documentation can help to evidence that the complaint is unfounded. Basically your ducks need to be in a row if your court a court or a disciplinary. You need to demonstrate efficiency that you are well organised and your professionalism. There will be no leniency show based on your good character or past work alone. So where? Where do we document? Most documentation is now electronic, but some paper documentation remains. Regardless of where you document, the principles of defensible documentation always need to be adhered to. So when do we record defensively? And the answer is always. All staff must ensure that the healthcare record to the patient or client is an accurate account of treatment, care planning and delivery. It should be written with the involvement of the patient or client wherever practical and completed as soon as possible after an event has occurred. It should provide clear evidence of the care planned, the decisions made, the care delivered and the information shared. So in order to, to um, document defensively, we should be person-centred. And what does person-centred mean? It means capturing the individuality, the uniqueness of people we work with, not generalised or generic recording. It should be objective, factual and not subjective, i.e. not what you feel. So not personal, judgmental or emotive. There are many misconceptions around the use of subjective words such as appears. This cannot be used as a factual observation, such as a patient appeared unsteady on his or her feet. A patient either is or is not unsteady on their feet. Documentation should be accessible, that is no jargon. Use common everyday language that most people would understand. If a patient requested to see their notes, would they understand what words mean? And evidence your observations. Example, patient looks better, why? What is your rationale? All entries should be timely. If something is documented late, explain why. And all sections must be completed. If there are gaps in documentation, does that mean they have been missed or that it was not applicable? Don't leave people guessing which it is. Only use approved abbreviations. All discipline roles have abbreviations, but do, do we have a common understanding of what they mean? Example, PT equals patient, physiotherapist, part-time, who knows? Good to have a list of common abbreviations that is regularly reviewed. Be precise and don't use vague descriptions. Expressions such as have a good day should not feature in isolation. Note should explain why the patient had a good day. Describe what happened to make it a good day. 
If an intervention action isn't carried out, what was the reason? Document it. And use your senses to record what you did. I heard, I felt, I saw. The use of a person's own words can help ensure there is no misinterpretation of what was said. To so use quotation marks where necessary. Good documentation should stand up to scrutiny. If your documentation is being scrutinized, that is looked at very carefully, are there gaps? Could it be misconstrued? Handwritten should be legible and clear. So no scribble, scrawly writing. Watch out for spelling mistakes. There is spell check on EMIS and, if, and most, if not all, electronic patient records. So here's some do nots. Don't document on behalf of someone else. Only document things that you have done. Allowing someone else to use your login won't do you, you or them any favours. And do not document opinions. It's not your opinion that counts, it's the facts. If you have to record opinion, make it clear that it's in an opinion. And documenting ahead of time. Documenting something before it has happened isn't being efficient. It can be fraudulent. And do not use negative language. Example, stubborn, grumpy, pleasantly confused, etc. Be factual and describe behaviours instead. Don't document care that hasn't been carried out, even if it's just a tick box. Ticking something has happened when it hasn't, example, patient gave consent, etc., is again fraudulent. Don't use meaningless phrases, example, slight well, what does that mean? And counter, don't countersign if you have not witnessed an activity or you can't validate that it took place. No matter how much you trust your colleague, student, trainee, and regardless of how nice they are, don't commit fraud. You would be seen as being complicit in any wrongdoing or poor practice if you did. If you have to document in retrospect, don't change the date and do not write written in re and do write written re in retrospect. <clears throat> so some sound advice. Good note taking, good defensible documentation is a vital tool of communication between all staff. Professionals must ensure that the healthcare record of the patient or client is an accurate account of treatment, care planning and delivery. It should be written with the involvement of the patient or client wherever practical and completed as soon as possible after an event has occurred. It should provide clear evidence of the care plan, the decisions made, the care delivered and the information shared. And remember, good documentation can not only help you in court, it can help you keep keep you out of court in the first place. However, if your documentation was required in court, would you be confident your documentation is defensible? Thank you for watching this presentation. <laughs>